we can demonstrate how, how important and how extensive activities is Combo Plan doing. So our first speaker is uh, Director of, uh, of Drug Advisory Program Combo Plan, Mrs. Oranuk Sungavana, and she will speak and introduce you with, with uh, the core structure of Drug Advisory Program today. So, Director, my floor is yours. Thank you. Can you hear me? Thank you, Mikhail. Uh, let me go to my slide. Can you hear me now? Okay. Well, thank you. Well, uh, first of <laughs> for having me in, in this panelist. Uh, I feel um, that it's so meaningful that we have a chance to um, to be here in this academic forum, and it's quite big forum that um, we can share our success story and uh, most importantly that we can share our precious moment with every one of you here because we are reaching our 50, as, as he said, our 50 years of our establishment. So it's very good to have everyone with us and celebrate together our 50 years, our, our 50 anniversary. So, um, well, beginning in, in 1973, the Colombo Plan Drug advisory Program uh, has established uh, with the um, with the idea of um, we respond to the the global threat of drug concern, especially in the Asia Pacific region. And uh, we actually have four programs under the Colombo Plan. We have capacity building, we have drug advisory program, we have gender affair program, and we have environmental program. But the most uh, long lasting and still active at the moment is the drug advisory program. Okay. Um, our drug advisory program, as I said, uh, after it's incepted in 1973, we are forming up with the vision to be a global leader in planning healthy, safe, and strong communities. Um, the Drug Advisory Program, or it's commonly named as DAP, um, we celebrate our uh, 50 years today with the, actually it responds to our strategic goals, uh, which cover, the first one is to promote the dissemination of um, the evidence-based practices that we have accumulated and distributed to our curricula. And the second one is to support the development of anti-drug policy in every level of the government. Uh, we also build a, a strong partnership between private and public sectors. Uh, we do ensure that all treatment and all um, populations that has to be undergo treatment will have um, special, specific, uh, special specialty care with um, professionals. And also we provide, uh, lately we, we add one more program on supply reduction in order to provide the timely and accurate information uh, in relation to the detection of toxic adulterant and also to prevent diversion of the illicit use of drugs, uh, more or less on the health concern issues. So I'm, I'm proud that we have proved ourselves uh, in this successful journey to several innovations on drug demand and supply reduction at the same time. Uh, actually, we have been run through, um, this is the coverage of our program. Not, we, we actually have 28 member states right now, but our work cover more than 80 countries altogether. Uh, like I said, we have we have list in the world first in many innovations. For example, like the first um, 
agency that makes the first global uh, curricula on treatment and rehabilitation uh, for children in the year 2012. <laughs> and one year later, in 2013, we did a first test kit technology to identify the toxic adulterant. And three years later, in 2016, we are doing the first uh, universal treatment curriculum on the global workforce. And we also do the first universal recovery curriculum in 2017. Uh, to showcase some of our successful milestones, uh, that I would like to highlight some measure of it now. Uh, under the demand reduction, I hope you can see the screen. Uh, the letter is a bit small. Um, the first one, we have reached out to women and children all around the world through our curricula. Uh, the second one, we expand the workforce in substance use professionals. Uh, and we also try to ad address the link between trauma and addiction. At the same time, we promote and support the recovery. Uh, we do the fortified of some prevention partnerships and especially we establish the Asian Youth Network and try to link them with the global one. Uh, we are breaking the grounds between treatment and substance use disorder uh, in several types that can reach a population with special care. And we, uh, during the, the time of the COVID-19, we try to respond to the problem with um, non-stop training by conversion our on-site curriculum into the online one. Uh, we do the mentor and um, many technical assistance throughout the networks that we have uh, around the world. And also, as I said, we unravel the opioid overdose crisis. Uh, for example, we identify the naloxone administration needs. Uh, in terms of supply reduction, we also do some, but um, the important thing is we can raise the alarm on the toxic adulterants in the world drug supply. Um, actually, um, I would leave all these things uh, to give you more details by Dr. Cho, but I can say that we have done so many things uh, along our journey of this success, and um, if if not too late, I would like to invite every one of you to visit our booth, which is just next door here, to see more information and get some publications that we have. Um, and also, please do not forget to take some giveaways with you too. Uh, so we are looking forward, looking ahead to achieving more, the next milestone of success with uh, other global communities. And I would like to thank everyone once again for allowing me to share this success story and in details by Dr. Cho. And also thanks for your kind attention to my presentation. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Director. And our second speaker is Joe. And Joe is literally heart of drug advisory program. And at the same time, if somewhere is drug advisory program, you can find behind it Josephine, if you want to have a perfect activity and perfect event, you need to invite Josephine. So our second speaker is Dr. Josephine Chong, and she will introduce you with key milestones in the history of drug advisory program. Go, floor is yours. Thank you, Mikhail. Thank you, Mikhail, for the kind introduction. Uh, I first met him and uh, Roger Peters and uh, Fernando Salaza, and I'm not sure if Diane Lesme is here. Uh, we met in March 2016 during the establishment of the ICUDDR in Hawaii. And till today, they remain very active members, member organizations of the ICUDDR. Congratulations and keep it up. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, I see familiar faces in the room. Allow me to recognize my DAP colleagues uh, for giving me your moral support today. And of course, uh, Ms. Veronica Philippe, our uh, former DAP director. And I see, of course, uh, uh, Sue Ellen and uh, William Crano, yeah, and uh, uh, Matesh Kozir, 
And uh, of course, our uh, UTC trainer, Rehana, and of course, Yatan, who is uh, not new to UTC. Um, and of course, uh, Dr. Riza from Indonesia. Yeah, so thank you so very much, and Irana, uh, for being here uh, to hear us out as um, I share uh, the stories of um, uh, Deb's uh, journey to success, 50 years changing lives for the better. Um, specifically, I will focus on stories on the ground and successful milestones in the region and beyond. So we first um, were established uh, to help um, uh, build Asia, but now we have gone beyond Africa and Latin America and the Caribbean. We currently have a Chile office. Uh, welcome, Diane. Right, so um, this is what we're going to share, uh, allow me, in the next uh, few minutes. Uh, we'll, I'll give you a, a very brief uh, walkthrough of what we have been doing, specifically on the transformation uh, program, as mentioned by um, uh, Ms. Nook earlier, uh, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, when um, international uh, borders were closed, um, we actually had to respond uh, when all in-person trainings uh, were put to a halt. So um, let's look at what the objectives of um, this uh, transformation program. It actually uh, happened uh, in two phases. And uh, actually, it aimed uh, to continue professionalizing the drug demand uh, reduction workforce during the COVID-19 pandemic, and also to complement and, sup and uh, supplement the existing face-to-face -face versions. At that point in time, we already had the UPC, UTC, and of course, the child. So uh, we could not just sit around um, and um, not do anything. So we actually, with additional funding from INL, US Department of State, uh, we embarked on this uh, project. So uh, this project actually involved um, two phases. Phase one was the uh, UPC practitioners core course and the UPC uh, managers and uh, supervisors uh, comprising nine courses, uh, one of which is developed by uh, Dr. William Crano and um, SOGI, the SOGI course. And phase two involved the WISE curriculum of four courses. So in total, um, we have come a long way actually with the in-person uh, trainings as well as the piloting and to a certain extent, the dissemination of these online instructor -led courses. So trainings from January 2020 to December 2022, we actually have um, reached out to 3,050 individuals uh, in the region and beyond, uh, coming from 74 countries. So how did we reach this? Uh, my focus today will be on the online instructor-led uh, managers and uh, supervisors, uh, which will be of interest uh, to uh, faculty staff of the ICU DDR uh, members, because um, this is where you might uh, think of wanting to integrate into your curriculum at the diploma level, or maybe at the certificate level, or maybe uh, integrate it into your master's programs. So let me um, share with you uh, how we have come uh, so far with this um, online instructor-led uh, courses. So the uh, transformation process is actually a four-step model. So uh, first of all, we contracted um, uh, universities and educational entities who were interested to develop um, the face-to-face uh, -face version to the online version. And uh, there was a selection committee. There was actually a bid and um, there was a technical committee comprising uh, members from um, the Colombo Plan staff, um, ICU DDR, ISEP, uh, UNODC, WHO, and uh, ITTC, led by um, Laurie. And uh, we sel they selected um, and assigned um, uh, contracted universities and education entities to a certain um, a course for them to develop uh, in using online and offline activities. And uh, they worked on this instructional design and they hosted it on the HEK platform. And again, uh, I have to commend um, Laurie and your team. So we are very happy that these course materials are actually hosted on the Healthy Knowledge uh, platform. And I'm sure uh, many of us among here have already um, taken some courses, uh, not specifically these, but maybe other courses uh, that are hosted on the HEK platform. And um, 
after um, the uh, courses were ready to be piloted, uh, we actually did it in the Spanish as well as the English version. And uh, to date, uh, 699 uh, drug demand uh, reduction uh, workforce in Asia, Africa, and Latin America from 42 countries have actually been trained or they actually did the uh, pilot uh, version of um, these uh, managers and supervisors and the SOGI. And um, this course design is now hosted on the HEK platform and um, uh, they are ready uh, to, to be accepting uh, training requests. So here on the slide, um, we will show you the course developers for phase one and phase two. So um, who are they? Uh, they actually come from um, Argentina, uh, Mexico, Chile, uh, the Philippines, even the UK and Spain. So these are the um, uh, courses that uh, were assigned to them uh, for the development. So they have got the Spanish as well as the English versions of, all the, of both of these courses. Next year, uh, let me just give you a snapshot of the online instructor-led asynchronous sessions for phase one. And uh, here we have the uh, synchronous sessions. These are actually um, uh, conducted uh, by the resource team comprising the instructor, the course coordinator and a tech support together with the learners. So there is an, um, an agenda uh, they have uh, depending on uh, the course. Uh, they have between uh, four to five online uh, sessions, synchronous sessions, one and a half hours where there is an agenda. Uh, they do reflections and um, they also have some activities on the Padlet uh, or maybe using Kahoot. So these are like interactive uh, sessions because this is the time um, when the learners are able to like interact uh, very briefly with the um, re with the with the resource team. Other than that, uh, basically it's more like um, uh, self-led in a way, but it is actually based on a training agenda. So they are not able to go by leaps and bounds like the self-led. Um, uh, UTC, uh, they actually are guided based on the training agenda to finish uh, certain modules and activities uh, for a certain uh, time. Say like in week one, they have to finish like module one. Then in week two and three, they finish module two, depending on the length of the, um, of the uh, module activities. So they listen to um, the uh, course materials which are actually delivered via instructional videos. So that's how uh, this online instructor-led uh, session, that's the design for that. Um, so what are the lessons learned? Wow, that was a big one, huh? Um, is it to tell me to stop? All right. Okay, so what are some of the learner reflections? So most of the learners actually um, uh, told us that online courses actually require good time management. They actually had to juggle time between their personal and uh, their family life with, the, uh, with their professional lives and this online course. So it actually takes a very long time, depending on the course. They can range between 6 to 12 weeks because this is the managers and supervisors series that I'm talking about. But if it's the SOGI course, it's just 4 weeks online. So we can imagine actually how tough it can be for someone to be... To be dividing time and most of them uh, try and hurry uh, during the weekends when they have more time. During the weekdays they are all very very busy with their own schedules um, but short of getting the ideal that is the reality on the ground. So as long as they complete all the activities and uh, we have certain eligibility criteria then we actually award them a certificate of completion because we cannot be too harsh on them because we are just trying to disseminate and complement this face-to-face um, -face version. So rather than not having anything, at least we have uh, these learners and I'm sure that um, after the course, they can always go back and refresh themselves on things that they are not very familiar. And anyway, they're also given the chance during the, the synchronous sessions to actually um, get uh, the um, resource team, especially the instructor and the course uh, coordinator, to actually uh, answer some of the concerns and, and issues. So um, this is what they also say. They need also need time for collaborative work with their co-learners because uh, during... Um, some of these activities, they, they require them to actually work in groups. 
And of course, during the breakout uh, sessions, in breakout rooms, during the online sessions, they also actually get into groups. So this is an opportunity for them to actually interact with each other. Now, let us go and um, hear out um, what the uh, trainers have to say about this. So I'm sharing with you here a very short trainer reflection by Dr. Maria Sarza from um, the University of Valencia in Spain. She undertook uh, as a course developer uh, also and also an instructor for course 5 of the Spanish version. And later, we also have Dr. Maria Isabel uh, Malga from the Philippines. She was the instructor for course 3 of the English version. So, um, let's, oh, uh, I don't see the cursor, no? Um, yeah, I couldn't see it there. Ah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And Spanish. I also coordinated their piloting in Spanish and recently coordinated all the three UBC courses and trained internationally on women's intervention for substance exposure wise. The experience in general has been very positive. The courses are strategically organized and count on numerous didactic methods and strategies from group growth work, videos, reflections, seminars and tutoring, along with practical activities to implement knowledge. There are so many global benefits of the digital versions to include reducing professional education disparities in the world, making possible that professionals and students worldwide can access these trainings online for free with the highest possible quality. Well-trained professionals will have a direct impact in their communities, and this is what it counts at the end. I'm very, very grateful for being part of this amazing project Thank you for all the support. Adios y buena suerte. All right. So thank you, Dr. Maria Sarza. I'm not able to find the... Yeah. Okay. All right. I know. I'm to the bill. Try. Buena suerte. Yeah. I have to click on that. Yeah. Okay. Now, what are my personal thoughts on this course that we handled recently? An online platform for an instructor is a lot of work. Checking on individual assignments and providing written feedback takes up a lot of time. As compared to a similar role in a face-to-face two-week workshop elsewhere. Now what are my personal thoughts on this course that we handled recently? An online platform for an instructor and together with Middlesex University and Spanish. I also coordinate it's a lot of work. The background. Yeah. Oh, there's no music. Yeah, I because play. I will play it there, right? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Together. yeah, it's okay. It's okay. okay. Let's we'll leave just it move to the next. No, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, leave, leave it. it together. Even yeah. if there's Dr. Hamad wants to listen. Now, what are my personal thoughts on this course that we handled recently? An online platform for an instructor is a lot of work. Checking on individual assignments and providing written feedback takes up a lot of time. As compared to a similar role in a face-to-face two-week workshop elsewhere, where I found it less stressful and more inspired meeting and interacting with the course participants. Personally, I can see the learning value of real-time interaction among learners, peer consultation and password conversations with the instructors and immediate feedback on their work. Perhaps a blended approach can be adapted where some of the course content could be covered asynchronously, while the rest of the week could be covered in person. I think um, these ideas and, and recommendations are hopefully to be worth considering um, for the next coming workshop or webinar. Um, thank you very much for being with us and for taking time listening to our experience and to our insight.
from this board. Right. So good. We had some background music, yeah? But there we have the message is loud and clear. Uh, there are pros and cons, uh, like all uh, modalities are, be it face-to-face -face or online instructor-led or even self-led. And we have actually taken the cue from uh, uh, Isabel. We have actually now trying to go into blended learning. In fact, we have actually tried with the NRC uh, on the UPC, where we actually did uh, for the family track as well as the school track, um, after the prerequisite core training uh, uh, in person, they actually had uh, an interval followed by uh, the, this is a hybrid training on the school where they actually did um, in-person trainings five days, two hours online where the resource team actually um, discuss uh, the, the, the course content with them. Uh, they finished like three modules. Then after that, there was another five day in-person uh, at the NRC. So we actually have taken the cue from here. Uh, we are always looking for recommendations uh, in order to improve and to actually give our best to the DDR workforce. So what's next? Um, so based on the uh, recommendations and from the resource team as well as the um, learners, we actually have um, certain tasks um, uh, in the pipeline. Some have been completed, some are ongoing. So the first one is actually we need an instructor manual. We need to redesign the instructor manual. We actually uh, uh, provided them with one, but it wasn't so comprehensive. So now we are thinking uh, that we should actually add in more, more um, guidelines, especially uh, the, the meeting agendas for how to conduct the uh, online meetings or the synchronous sessions. And this instructor manual will be an autonomous guide as well as a reference for the resource team. Uh, of course, we, we, they actually also have the trainer manual, like the usual face-to-face -face version, but this would be an added bonus. And uh, we also intend to train um, our Colombo plan trainers on this training modality. Um, this one is pending um, for, while waiting for funding. Uh, we're not sure whether we have donors in, in, among you in this room who will be willing to fund this, uh, where we can conduct uh, TOTs for our Colombo plan trainers so that they become not only subject matter experts in the course that they will train on, but they also need to improve the navigation skills on the HEK platform. Um, it's not so very difficult to navigate, but uh, you need uh, some training, and as well as um, the ability to use um, the interactional um, uh, tools um, online, uh, like Kahoot and Padlet and all that. And um, the third one is the global dissemination and implementation by our training providers. Uh, this we are actually embarking with additional funding uh, from INL. Uh, we have actually offered uh, to our training providers as well as education providers who actually are you all uh, in this room. Uh, and to date, we are proud to, um, to share with you that uh, Ateneo di Zamboanga University in Zamboanga, Mindanao, Philippines, uh, led by Dr. Le Labrador, who was the instructional designer for the Core Course 10 uh, online instructor-led English version, uh, they have uh, taken up and they have responded to our call uh, to actually um, conduct the online instructor-led core course 10 for their university staff. And uh, the learners are actually completing this course uh, by the end of this month. So uh, on this note, uh, we are extending this offer and invitation to you all here in this room uh, who may be interested uh, to take up this offer. So it is on a cost-sharing basis where Colombo Plan will take care of the HAK fees unless Laurie is so kind as to waive these fees. Well, they're not very expensive. They're not very expensive. It's just 696 US dollars yeah, for 30 learners. So what do you have, right? It's even less than a thousand, right? So anyway, Laurie, it's just a joke, yeah? Yeah. We, you, you, you need to pay. You need to pay the staff, right? So we understand fully. That is actually a very minimal, and we are actually very happy to be collaborating with you. You have actually given us this technical expertise. We are really very appreciative. And um, you will cover the um, cost of the um, trainers, mainly their honorarium. Uh, if you're able to negotiate with them, they can probably do it for you free. Uh, we have actually Colombo Plan uh, master trainers who actually have... Um, uh, been with us uh, 
during the piloting of the online instructor led and you can just drop me a line and i will just give you a a, a list for you to choose from uh, we know who have actually done which courses so they already have uh, some training experience leading this online instructor led uh, this is not a commercial eh? but um, i i really i really appeal to to you uh, uh, to just think about it because this is the way we are going to uh, operationalize this global dissemination and implementation of this online instructor led which INL has actually invested a lot and we now need some return on investments anyway think about it uh, we will be here until tomorrow you can talk to uh, you can talk with us uh, after this session or during the course of the day or even tomorrow and uh, I will share with you how this will work, especially for the education providers and the training providers. Uh, training providers will not apply in this uh, platform, but the education providers are you all, actually. So I'm waiting to hear from you. Right. Um, oh, what happened now? Okay. So for more information on this uh, online instructor lab, you can visit the um, online learning hub on the ISOP website. So thank you, Livia, and your team, especially Joanna and Jack. They have been very um, uh, co uh, very cooperative and very kind. Yeah? Uh, so this, all these are actually hosted on the ISOP website. And the learners who register for these courses, they register online via uh, through ISOP before they're actually taken to the HEK platform. So that's why uh, Colombo Plan is very happy to be collaborating with international partners yeah, like uh, ITTC and of course uh, ISAP. You are our long running uh, partner. Yeah. So just visit, um, uh, just go to the online learning hub uh, on the ISAP website and you can just read about it and um, that's, you're good to go. Now, let me now move on from the online instructor led to the universal treatment curriculum self led online version. I'm sure um, uh, several of us in this room have also registered for this. Uh, uh, UTC uh, self-led online, but just let me share with uh, some of us who are not so very familiar. Uh, you just go to the isub.net, click on professional development, then the UTC self-led courses. You can just scroll down after this this page here, and you and you are there. Then what you do is you go to the courses uh, that you actually are interested, and then they will have a description, and then you can register for it. Right. So, at the moment, the courses that are available are UTC 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. Uh, UTC 5 is really very special. Uh, we are still updating. Um, they should be ready, available by the end of this year, uh, at the latest, if not the earliest. Uh, how did we get here? So the development of these um, UTC self-led courses actually started way back in 2018, even before the pandemic. Because we were thinking at that time, uh, we should actually um, um, supplement and complement the face-to-face the -face versions. So uh, to date, over 2,500 DDR professionals from 128 countries and six continents have assessed at least one course. And the numbers are rising. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, not yet. <laughs> Mikkel is already trying to get me off, huh? but I'm still staying. Yeah, I'm still staying, you know. Okay. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. We, we, need, we need an interlude, no? All right. So, what do our customers say? So, they are actually given the opportunity to actually... Um, answer some of the course evaluations. So you can see here, uh, these are some of their reflections. Yeah, um, Voice instructions help the learning and made it a bit interactive. Yeah, Because self-led version, it's a very lonely journey. Yeah? It's you interacting with the course. So unless you have friends with you to discuss, you're actually all alone. It's a very, uh, it's a solo journey. And all the opportunities to review and check my knowledge. And uh, the training materials like slides, videos, manuals are very useful and easier to understand. If you actually click onto that little uh, icon, you will actually be given an overview of this self-led course. And the way they've done it, 
um, we actually contracted um, a professional agency. So this is a very high level uh, kind of a development. So it's very complicated. It's very cute. They use this tapestry of uh, of, of what um, uh, uh, the journey uh, as as a as a user, you know, is and all that, and and how actually treatment gives you the opportunity, you know, to 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 swing back again. And uh, the case studies we were very relevant and helped me understand the contents, creativity, activities to keep the interest. And it says here, everything. Well, that's fantastic, yeah? So it's everything. So self-led courses are everything. So why don't you try and see whether you can get all the everything or not? And let me know, all right? Now, so what's next? So this was the course development timeline. They have actually changed already because uh, UTC uh, 21 is supposedly ready um, in May, was supposedly ready in May 2023, so probably is now in the finalization stages before it's being posted on the ISAP website. Then we have UTC 16 in June, and of course, uh, August, this will be like UTC 10, and then in uh, September, October, and January 2024. So these are some of the um, uh, timelines for the UTC advance. So from the basic, uh, we are moving on to the advance. So what's uh, in the pipeline? More courses, and uh, more languages to increase access worldwide. At the moment, it's only in Spanish and English. Uh, we hope to like go into like Portuguese, maybe Russian, maybe Arabic, and uh, whatever languages uh, that are in demand. And yes, in Korea, yes, Nami, yeah, hi Nami. <laughs> so we hope we hope to hear from you, yeah. So maybe probably your, your faculty staff can actually translate. We actually do not need professional translation agencies, not that I want them to close shop, but uh, it would be actually good if we can have uh, the involvement of uh, faculty staff, uh, which are you all actually, because you will have a certain uh, um, subject matter knowledge, and uh, we also need linguistics actually. So it's actually content as well as the language. So it's not as though um, uh, we just need a translator. It's not only the linguistic part of it all, but also the content. Right, that's it. You now you can get rid of me. Thank you so much. So the good news is uh, Colombo Plan Drug Advisory Program is actually uh, uh, getting ready uh, and barking on exciting uh, times ahead. We already have the face-to-face um, -face versions. We now have the online instructor-led. We are now also having the self-led. And we are now actually also putting some more on the plate, which is the hybrid uh, versions. So do not lose out in this race of being a professional and a credentialed um, drug demand reduction uh, workforce uh, member. Just join us, avail of these opportunities. Just drop us a line. Um, we, have, we have the contact. If you need. Um, to contact me, just drop me a line and I will be with you. Thank you so much. Now you head up the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Unstoppable Joe. Okay, thanks so much. And as Josephine mentioned, uh, Drug Advisory Program uh, stood at the beginning of many organizations and she mentioned uh, 2016 where we established ICUDDR in Honolulu and Hawaii. And today we will speak about much bigger brother or sister, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and Livia Edegar will introduce you with activities related to Colombo Plan from the perspective of International Society of Substance Use Professionals. And Livia is also facilitating uh, national chapters what is special program relevant to, uh, to this conference and to Colombo Plan activities. And Livia is also at the position of deputy director in ISAP and working very closely with Joanna, Joanna Travis, and she will speak about many of these activities. And floor is yours. <laughs> thank you very much, Mikhail. And um, well, thank you all for coming, and thanks very much. I feel very honored to be part of this panel. Congratulations on the 50th anniversary. And, um, like you said, Dr. Joe, um, actually, I don't know if some of you might remember, ISAP was actually part of Colombo Plan. ISAP was a Colombo Plan project, so <laughs> we were born out of Colombo Plan, so it's an honor to be here with you today celebrating this milestone. And uh, I also wanted to uh, thank um, ICUDDR, Kevin with, and his team, for the invitation to be part of the conference and congratulate you on a wonderful conference. Um, so. 
just wanted to check before I start. So um, my presentation is how much time, well, we actually have time left, but it's going to be shorter because Dr. Cho already, <laughs> already covered some of my slides, which is great, so thank you. <laughs> So I was fine for you to go on. Um, but yes, is there anyone in the room who hasn't heard about ICEP? Are there people that, can you raise your hand if you've never heard? Oh, excellent. Perfect one, two, <laughs> right. <laughs> excellent. So we have a couple of people. So that's exciting. So for those of you who have not heard about ICEP, so we're the International Society of Substance Use Prevention and Treatment Professionals, actually, but short, International Society of Substance Use Professionals, ICEP. We're a global NGO, uh, and our focus is to bring people together, to bring the drug demand reduction workforce together. So people that work in substance use prevention, treatment, and recovery support, so they get trained through Colombo Plan and our like, other international partners. They get certified through um, GCCC, also the Global Center for Credentialing and Certification, also part of Colombo Plan. And then we offer them a network to, like Dr. Joe said, to access the materials, the resources, to network, um, to share knowledge with others. So that's kind of what ICEP is for. And we do that. We have three different areas of work. We have our digital platform, the website. We have our events. And we have our national chapters. And we are... Um, funded by the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of International Codics and Law Enforcement Affairs by INL. And as part of that, you can see here uh, that this is kind of a number of organizations that when we started, which was actually in Thailand in 2015 in Bangkok, uh, that's when we launched the ISAP website, um, that when it was part of Colombo Plan, um, a group of organizations came together and um, saw the need for an organization, for a society that would bring all the professionals together under one roof. So within our bigger family, we also have a smaller family, and there we have ICUDDR as one of our main partners. We work very closely with them, also in the different regions, also on the development of our national chapters. Another partner is GCCC, a part of the Colombo Plan, and then we also have the ITTCs, and we have Lori here, Susan here, so thank you very much for your support, and especially with our national chapters. Um, we have a very strong connection in, I see Irina here in the Ukraine, between the national chapter and ITTC, and also I think, I'm not sure if Goodman is here in South Africa, and now developing also in Peru and in Colombia, so we're very grateful for those connections as well, and for the support. So the idea is like, ISIP offers membership at the individual level, then we have ICIP UDDR working closely with the universities, the institutions, GCCC make sure that people get certified, credentialed, and then we have ITTC and they focus on work at the policy level. So this, I prepared this a couple of weeks ago. I am excited to announce that we're now over 32,000 members. So I checked and we now have 32,000 members. We've really grown a lot. So when I started with ISEP, which was like six years ago, uh, we had around 5,000 members. So we've really expanded and again, due also to the efforts and the support of our partners like Colombo Plan, because like Dr. Joe said, people register through the ISEP website and then they become an ISEP member first. And so, yeah, this number has definitely grown to, to the efforts of our partner organizations. So I don't know if you've signed up on the ISEP website and if you filled out the application form, you might have seen that we ask our members the areas um, of work. So what are they interested in and which areas do they work in? So you can see here, most of the people that are ISEP members are actually like in training. So they either provide training, they're trainers. Um, so we have 16,000 people out of those 32 that are um, trainers. Um, then others that actually do research, there's the connection to ICUDDR, universities, researchers. Um, so that's about 10,000. And then we have, and of course, we have the numbers are higher here because we have some people that do research and evaluation of programs or delivery of trainings and programs. And then, yeah, you see evaluation and delivery of programs is also above 10,000. Good. Um, so looking at Asia, uh, we have a very strong and active membership base. Um, so we have out of those 32,000, 10,625 members are in Asia. Uh, we have national chapters in Afghanistan, India, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Pakistan, Philippines, and Uzbekistan. And I'm very excited because we're at the moment developing a chapter in Thailand, in Sri Lanka, and we're also looking at 
Yes, excellent, perfect. Yes, Dr. Papapo, great. Has been really, we've been working with her and we're really excited to hopefully soon launch the chapter to also have that added to the ICEP family in Asia. And yeah, we're also exploring Vietnam, for example, as another country um, to add to the ICEP family. And as I've said, our collaboration with Colombo Plan in the region has also helped us to grow. Substantially. Um, here are a few areas that we collaborate with Colombo Plan with. As I said, ICIP started as a Colombo Plan project. And um, the, the training part that Dr. Joe, she covered, so basically all the ICIP website houses, the manuals. So if you're, we also have the training provider, the, the application process, we have the information of all the training providers. So if you're interested to look what training education providers are in your region, you go to the ISIP website and there you can access that. We have a training calendar, a training database, and we advertise and promote Colombo Plan trainings. So usually you send us an email and then we make sure we put it on the website, we promote it on our social media channels and we share it with our members in our newsletter. And then, um, yes, Colombo Plan has definitely been in, in, well, regarding our events, our annual events has been uh, running most of the trainings um, so that's really the, the big provider of trainings at our annual events, regional and international events. And also, they have also been supporting us with the national chapter development in Asia, as well as, as you mentioned, the Chile office in Latin America. Good. So I've mentioned our three areas of work. I'm going to go into this. And this really focuses more on, because it is about the collaboration with Colombo Plan, so what we have on our website and what really is the, the areas of work that we work with Colombo Plan, so I'll show you that now. So like Dr. Cho mentioned, this is our website, www.icep.net. Um, so there you can find all of the different resources. We have the website at the moment in English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Arabic, and Russian. It is a bit of a challenge because keeping it up to date, because we add a lot of resources on a regular basis. So we're trying to keep it up to date. So that's why at the moment we're focusing on those six languages and developing the content in those. Um, as I've said, we have a, a calendar for trainings, but also for events and webinars. We have an area that's called Knowledge Share, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Networks, which is kind of a forum for professionals to come together and share and comment. Uh, we have a My ICEP dashboard, so if you uh, sign up to your ICEP account, you can go to your dashboard and there you can see your activity, like what you've been doing. It's like kind of similar, you know, when you're on social media, you're on Facebook, you can see your news feed, so that's kind of what it is. And we have a job board because our members approach us quite regularly and ask us about job opportunities. So if you have any jobs, if you know of any jobs, please send them to us because that's what we post on our job board. Um, and yeah, it's, that will be very helpful for us. The trainings, I'm not going to go into this because Dr. Cho covered it. We have the, the manuals on the ISAP website. And yes, I also wanted to again um, thank Laurie and her team because as Dr. Cho mentioned, we use the Healthy Knowledge platform and uh, that's great too. I mean, I think, yeah, Bill McLean from INL said yesterday at a meeting that like ICIP is the home for everyone. So I really like that. Like, I think it's really like everyone coming together and using the platform. And I think we've grown a lot, but it's really just because of all of you, right? And the collaboration that we have. Good. So this has already been covered, the self-led and instructor-led courses, our virtual events. Um, and I can see my, my colleague Olivia Woodrow is in, in the room and she's definitely, the, the webinars, that's definitely her work. She's done an ex excellent job. We've grown really a lot due to the pandemic as well. Like we had our first webinar, actually we started February, March 2020 and that's exactly when the, when the pandemic hit. So over the past three years, we've held 200 and 11 webinars and virtual events. And I really have to say again, thank you to our national chapters because you know they do an amazing job in providing webinars. And I know Martin Agwogi, he's here as well. And like the webinars in Nigeria, for example, they have bi-monthly webinars and it's just amazing. And again, the work of our national chapters is on a voluntary basis. So they really do all of that. So it's, it's really wonderful to see. Many of those 211 webinars were actually hosted by our national chapters with our technical support. We've had more than 54,000 participants from 182 countries and territories, three virtual conferences due to the pandemic, and the number of languages that the webinars have been offered in were 14, and here you have the 
the main languages that we've offered them. Again, because of our national chapters, we have these different languages as well. And here you have some flyers from some of the activities that we've done together in collaboration with Colombo Plan, the in-depth view of the ICEPS online learning hub presentation, and also with the Chile office, we did um, a webinar together with Mariano Montenegro on the scientific evidence. Good. Here's the Knowledge Share. So the Knowledge Share is an online library with, you can see here in red, the number of resources. I, I looked at it before coming and I was like, I was amazed myself. Like it's really a wealth of information that's on there. Also very helpful and useful for students, for, you know, if you're really looking. So if you share that with your students, you know, if they're looking at a specific topic, we have different themes and categories. The main ones obviously are prevention, treatment, recovery, support, and now also adding harm reduction to that, and then we have sub-themes. So if you're looking for something specific, motivational interviewing, just, um, yeah, you can filter actually and search for that. And as you can see, we have now almost 2,000 research um, summaries. So what we do is our team and our members, so this is also like, again, our members can upload their resources and their research, and then we review it and publish it. And we have a team, the, the scientific support team, and they upload around like 10 um, articles a week. Um, so they read the articles and then they summarize it and then provide the links to the articles. Publications, we have around 900 news, over a thousand news articles on what's happening in the drug demand reduction field. Resources, um, 1,154 and events, as I said, webinars and um, in-person events. And again, Colombo Plan, we have actually for our partner organizations like Colombo Plan, you can filter, you can see within the knowledge share what resources are from Colombo plan and what events are from Colombo plan, like if they uh, do a, um, a call for master trainers or for any kind of trainings, like we have that on the website and you can go there directly. Good. And then our networks, that's like a forum. And um, when I look now, we have around 140 networks. Not all of them are active. I have to say we have different networks. We have public networks and private networks. And it's really the private ones are the ones that are most active. Because again, working with Colombo Plan, if they have a training, they might use the network for the trainees um, to comment, to share, to upload. So that's really what you, you can see here, a few examples of the, um, yeah, I've also put the ICUDDR, um, Chile Colombo Plan, for example, group that we have on there. And also on different themes, like for example, prevention, treatment, alcohol, different areas that you can go to and exchange your knowledge with other professionals. Um, our events, so as you can see here, we launched ICEP at the Bangkok event in 2015. Our events are very similar to the ICDDI event, so we usually come together for a week, uh, and um, then we have a week of trainings, and we have three days of plenary <coughs> sessions. Usually, again, the topics are prevention, treatment, um, tr recovery support, and now for the for next year, we'll also have harm reduction as one of the, the plenary the, the panels that we will be offering. Um, and you can see here what we do is we go to different regions of the world. So we, we've started in Asia, then we went to Latin America, so we were in Brazil, Mexico, then Africa, Kenya, we were in Austria. Um, and then, unfortunately, the one in South Africa and then the virtual one, those were both virtual events in 2020 and 2021. And then last year we had a wonderful and excellent event with Dr. Hamadis here from NRC, um, the former director. He was, yeah, very helpful and, yeah, I hope some of you, I think some of you were definitely there. We had a wonderful week in Abu Dhabi. And then this year we had a regional, a smaller event with our um, national chapter in Argentina. Good. Um, here's just again like looking at Colombo Plan's work and their support. You can see here at the first event in Bangkok there were Colombo Plan training workshops offered to 372 participants. There were actually over 2,000 people from 61 countries and that's when we launched the website and we unveiled the ISAB logo and these famous I am ISAB letters that we usually have at our events. Um, until today, yes. Um, good. And here you can see, I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can just see here all of the Colombo Plan workshops. As I said, when you really look at our events, Colombo Plan is really the main training provider. So you can see all of the UPC, UTC courses, and now uh, also URC in the future. Um, here you can see the Vienna. And again, looking at the, the Abu Dhabi one, the big one last year, you know, you can see here the numbers. We had like, yeah, 
over a thousand in-person in participants, but we also had the virtual component, so we had a week long of um, virtual um, content as well that people could cover. And again, we had the uh, six different Colombo Plan workshops and also Colombo Plan side events. So our partner organizations also have side events at our uh, at the conference. Um, so here you can see the list of side events from last year. Good, and yes, this year, as I said, in April, we were in Argentina. It was an event in Spanish. The first day we had interpretation into um, English because we had some English speaking um, speakers, but yeah, the rest of the, all of the trainings, everything was in Spanish, and we also had a national chapters meeting there. Good, let me see, I've got four minutes left. Good, so the last area of our work, which is really like <laughs> my baby, like this is <laughs> definitely what I get very excited about, are the national chapters. Um, again, this has grown substantially. When I started, we had five national chapters, and now we have 36. Um, yeah, but, which is really wonderful. But also, I've, now we have a big um, team, right? When I started, it was the former executive director, Jeff Lee, and me working on this. And now we have, for each region of the world, we actually have a coordinator overlooking the activities. So um, our national chapters, for those of you who are new to ICIP, basically, they do the work that we do at the international level. They do that at the local level. Um, and Mikal is here. We also have a national chapter in together with we work with Charles University in Czech Republic, and so you can see here. This is the list of our national chapters. I'm not going to run through it now, but like yeah, it, all of this information is on our website. We have a section for our national chapters, and uh, yeah, here's the number of national chapters in Asia and actually the membership base. As you can see again, out of the 32,000 members that we have, we actually have almost a third, right? 9,000 members are from our national chapters in the region. So actually very strong, like especially like for example, India, uh, Pakistan, we have a lot, and now also we're growing substantially in Southeast Asia. <laughs> yes, and like I've said with Dr. Papaboon, yes. <laughs> so we're really excited about the, the ICEP Thailand chapter and really hope to strengthen also our work in the region together with, with you. And again, there's the strong link to ICUDDR, right? And so that's, that's really what we're hoping to work together. And again, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. If, if a partner organization is already doing something, we just want to be here to support. Um, good. And um, just a quick one, collaboration with Colombo Plan with our national chapters. As I said, they support our national chapters. So when we go into a new country, we actually go in Latin America. We work very closely, for example, with CCAT. They support the development of our national chapters there. Uh, but we also go to other partner organizations, and we consult Colombo Plan. We consult UNODC and ask them, you know, because the process is we have a tender announcement, and then we have different organizations apply. And depending on the country, then we have either one host organization for our national chapter or we have a consortium of different organizations working together. We're now moving away from the one host organization model to a consortium model from in most countries. So here you can just uh, see the different, um, again, like our national chapters, some of them work together with Colombo Plan in the development of training materials. I think you had the slide where you had the uh, ICEP Argentina host organization developing um, a training. We also have the ICEP UK Middlesex University working with you. Yes, so we have that connection as well to Colombo Plan, that some of our host organizations are universities. And uh, yes, then we, you can see here I have uh, an upcoming event. Uh, well, we launched ICEP Philippines, relaunched ICEP Philippines in December, and we have an upcoming event with ICEP Malaysia. They are going to have their International Recovery Symposium, so you're all invited to come in September, September 18th through 21st. And again, there's going to be seven tracks, UTC, Recovery Support uh, Services, Peer and Alice. So yes, you're all invited to come to Malaysia and participate in that. And then the um, yeah, ICEP Philippines uh, is working together with the INL office, UNODC, and also Colombo Plan on, you know, like arranging their ATI, alternatives to um, incarceration in the country. And then ICEP UAE, as I mentioned, our host organization, the National Rehabilitation Center in UAE, um, Abu Dhabi, they are working together with Colombo Plan on the training delivery in country. Good. Um, I'm not going to go through all this. This is just, again, in, in Latin America to show you. These are really, I've just pulled out examples of collaboration between our national chapters and uh, Colombo Plan in the region. Again, it's about like creating the materials, you know, or like asking for advice from our national chapters, and also they participate in our events. And we usually, with our national chapters, quarterly we have regional calls and we have our partners. We invite our partners to attend that, like Mariano Montenegro actually is on these calls, their virtual calls, and he gives updates from Colombo Plan. 
Yes, and also in Africa, we have a strong collaboration between Colombo Plan and our African national chapters. Mostly as actually uh, the national chapters working with them on training delivery. So here you can see a few, few examples from Botswana, Kenya, Namibia, and Togo on different trainings that they offered. And then closing ceremonies and graduation ceremonies. And again, here um, similarly from South Africa as well. Good, so I think I've managed, I think it's 10, excellent, perfect. So yes, um, if you have any questions, if you're interested in ICEB, if you're interested in our collaboration with uh, Colombo Plan, please let me know, you have my email address here. Um, I will be here until the end of the week. So um, yes, just come and ask me. And again, I want to just thank again, ICUDDR and all of the partners in here for your support. Thank you. Thanks so much for all three presentations, very nice presentations, and as I see, we have a plenty of time for questions, comments, wishes, <laughs> whatever you want. Yeah, I will. No, Dr. Michael, you could hold okay. that. Okay. I will borrow one. Yeah, you can, you can, you can share. Yeah, yes. we have a first hand. I am thankful to them and I said because both it's necessary to push on. Okay, I am Dr. Jawad from Pakistan. I am highly thankful to DAP and uh, ICEP because they provided me a number of chances to develop, my, uh, develop as a true professional in the field of addiction treatment. Uh, and uh, they try to change the whole scenario. They are trained, the Pakistani trainers, on different tracks and uh, we all are very excited. But uh, nowadays there is a problem. On online self-led courses, I recommended many of my students to uh, get trainings from online portal, Healthy Knowledge. And uh, UNODC is not uh, owning those certificates. So kindly, UNODC Pakistan. At, uh, nowadays, there are advanced trainings on, and uh, UNODC Pakistan is not owning those certificates. If you require some information, I will provide you. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Dr. Jawad. Um, maybe I can just uh, <clears throat> share with you. Um, I think um, to qualify to uh, to the advanced UTC um, uh, training, I think this is a TOT, right? That is organized by UNODC. Is it? No. Uh, it's not. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, Dr. Noor. Yeah. Can I respond to that, uh, Dr. Noor from Pakistan? Uh, basically, uh, what you are telling about. There were two sets of training, you know about that. First is related with the TOT, of course, and for the TOT purposes, actually, uh, the uh, national trainers, as uh, you know, that uh, mostly trained by you, of course, that's the Colombo plan, uh, they were actually taken into consideration, and they, they actually took the uh, advanced course trainings. Reason being, you have to not only fulfill one criteria, that is related with the, that you are interested to take up the courses. But uh, there is other criteria related with, of course, the number of day, years experience, which is related over their supervisory experience. So that is also uh, needed. Some or the other, when it comes down to the, uh, you know, nowadays the echo trainings are taking place. We are conducting those echo trainings, those master trainers who have actually uh, conduct, uh, got trained over there. And they, these are being uh, conducted, and these are being conducted with only those people who has got that amount of experience over there as well. So it's not the UNODC, it's the criteria, which one of the criteria, please, one of the criteria which is not being fulfilled over there, 
is number of years experience to take up the advanced courses. So as far as the other criteria, that is, uh, the certificates is not an issue. So certificates are being actually recognized. So that's not the issue. Thank you. Um, sorry, because like, I think that uh, if it's a UN no DC concern, we're not there. Yeah. The panelists are not the right person to talk about it. Like, uh, maybe that's a conversation that you can have on. Yeah. Yes. OK. Ah. Ah. OK, thank you so much. Um, Kevin? You want to have a question? Thank you. Actually, I, I don't have a question. I just want to respond to some of this comment. We have Karen Peters, who is the regional ON, uh, UNODC person here at this conference. Uh, she will be presenting on Friday at 1130. If you'd like, you can come to me, and I can find her if you don't know her, and you can talk about this issue. She can raise it at the UNODC regional office, um, because I think they're probably the more relevant organization to do that. Thank you, Kevin. And we have uh, two questions here. Oh, sorry, yeah. um, doctor. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Hello, good morning. I'm Christiana from University of Indonesia, and thank you for uh, the presentation. I would like to ask uh, about how to adapt the curriculum uh, that you have to our sub-specialized program because we have addiction psychiatrist program and I do not want to like hit and run but it will be like persistent curriculum to our uh, university curriculum. Do you have any experience about that? Thank you so much. That's, uh, you can start. And no, I, I wouldn't know how to do Okay, that, uh, that's probably a question on me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, we have uh, some first experiences how to adapt this curricula into the university context. Uh, very nice example can be given by uh, Spanish partners on Balearic Islands, and they took UTC and UPC together and mix it and transform into the master program on Balearic Islands. And uh, this team is led by Carmen Orte, and that's one possible option. What? particular university does, did uh, successfully in terms of transforming curricula. And another ca example can be from my team in Prague because we, uh, our original curriculum we created before this curricula because we have started 20 years ago. And my task was how to make it compatible uh, with the curricula and we did it um, um, with UPC and UTC2, and we published a part, uh, uh, the paper about it. If you would like, I can send this paper to you, and uh, what we made step by step with the team, with teachers, how uh, we trained the teachers how to use the curricula, and, and I can send this paper. It's not so easy because uh, the original design was for trainings, uh, lifelong education training, continual education. And for, for, for the university context, it's not so easy how to transform it, uh, how to divide uh, units in, in the curricula, uh, and how to pair it with uh, ECT credits um, on universities. Yeah, it's, it's not easy, and it sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, take a lot of, uh, takes a lot of time. Uh, how to do it, and, and it's always questionable because we are moving exactly at the edge between lifelong education and, and uh, university programs. So if you, if you uh, would like to have, I can send a paper about it. So uh, the, uh, the second, uh, yeah, you, you are. Thank you very much. Um, Professor Jalal Tufik, I'm the, uh, the president, uh, actually, of the uh, International Narcotics Control Board uh, in Vienna. And um, I have um, two questions for you. Um, my number one priority uh, for my tenure is really Africa. Um, so uh, how do you go by picking countries in a, in a given continent? Uh, what are the, uh, uh, the partnership criteria or, or the, the, uh, the mechanisms of you know, uh, going and, and working in a given country? That's one question. The second question is, we've been training um, uh, professionals over the last two decades, but then again, when it comes to um, 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 supporting the, um, uh, the policy making in place, 
there is a huge lacking link between the training and qualification um, regarding the uh, working with, with in, in the substance use field and then translating that into policy making. And uh, this public health dimension and policy making dimension is always lacking in the training of professionals. Anything you can do about that, I mean, that I think it's, it's a major issue. So we have very good clinicians, we have very good professionals, and so they do a great job working with patients in, in every field of that, that's related to drug uh, use or substance use, except when it comes to translating that into policy making. Thank you. Um, I think regarding to your first question about uh, to recruit members into the Colombo plan, right? To have countries involved with us. Uh, well, the criteria actually um, I actually just start with the Colombo plan for a year. But my understanding is um, we actually open to the countries who would like to be a member of, of the Colombo plan. But uh, from my understanding, uh, because our major donor is INL, so INL actually have their own, um, what we call, area of working. For example, like in Asia Pacific, uh, they would like to encourage Colombo plan to take care of the areas. So all countries in Asia Pacific, we have uh, no problem to expand our membership with them. And in Latin America, it would be another agency. I, if I'm not mistaken, it's CCAP OAS taking care of Latin America. And another part is Africa. It's under the African Union. So in terms of membership expansion and countries to be enrolled, uh, if it is under Asia Pacific, we are very open. But anyway, there are some countries as well, like Chile, they also would like to be a member of us. And, and it's actually in the final stage. Uh, we, we include them as a member already because a lot of paperwork are already there. And the second question is what, in terms of policy and... Training, there's a gap. There's a gap. So we have to Uh, regarding to the policy involved with uh, the training professionals, something like that, if I'm not mistaken, your, your question. Can you, can, can, you, can you ask again? Is it okay if I The second question. Okay, my, my question was, my question was, uh, let, me, let me rephrase it. Um, um, I, I think uh, there is a huge deal of training going on in the world worldwide for professionals working in the field of substance use. That's perfect. And you make very good clinicians and, I mean, and, uh, and also uh, health professionals in every aspect and every dimension of substance use uh, treatment and care and management. Uh, but then when it comes to having those professionals uh, working to translate that into policy making, and with, you know, within the public health dimension and approach, there was a huge lacking link between the profession they acquired, I mean, the qualification they acquired, and the translation into policy making. And you see it. I mean, every given country, and especially in developing countries, I mean, when they uh, seek help from professionals uh, at the government level, uh, even, even the civil society, by the way, and I think it's even worse. I mean, in, 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 uh, in, in, when it comes to NGOs and, and, the, and the training of, of professionals working with NGOs. So there was a big problem in, into translating the qualification and training into policy making. Thank you. This is a very good question. And uh, well, in my view, you know, actually for the Colombo plan, we try to work closely with the focal point. You know, uh, our members said we have drug focal point, so we try to work closely with them. So whatever we have been uh, giving, providing our service in terms of training, in terms of capacity building, we will notify them and let them know what we are doing. So um, 
and we try to bridge the gap. Actually, for example, I give you like the the Philippines. Uh, Philippines have organized the uh, just recently the ICEP Philippines, and in that uh, conference, we invite. Both government sectors, private sector, including IO and NGO, to be part of that event, so they know where we are and they know what we are doing. So they know already that what kind of trainings, professionals that we all have, and then, uh, and also if if I'm not wrong, the dance rush drug boss, who is the focal point of the um, the ISAP in Philippines, they are the key agencies who are leading the ISAP. So whoever get trained by either by any agencies, including the Colombo Plan, will be notified the Dance Rush Dark Board, so they can make use of those trained professionals. This this kind of thing can bridge the gap between policy to make use of the trained professionals and the reality of the people who get trained by their own organization. So this is one example that we did, and um, the other thing is um, you know in any forum. We would like to include um, both uh, private sector and government sector into the same forum, so that uh, they know what we are doing and the information they try to share with the focal point as much as we can. Uh, for example, like lately in the um, the credentialing program yeah, again in the Philippines, we try to share the information of people who are qualified already to be the professional uh, to to train to do the echo training in the countries. With the um, policy level, so that those policy uh, maker bodies can make use of these people for the ground training. I hope I an yeah. answer your questions. Um, no, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, with your permission, may I add something to that? Okay. So, hi, I'm Verna. So, I have the privilege to work with ISAP, ICUDDR, and Colombo Plan. So, to begin with, sir, um, Colombo Plan is not a policy making body. So, but that gives us the 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 leeway to work not only with um, government agencies but also non-government organizations. So that's not the main thrust. But when we talked about collaboration, so UNODC is the one that actually assists in that. And in fact, in every ISAP conference, there's a training for policymakers that could assist them in, in that area. But I do recognize that there's a gap, not only a gap between um, training and practice, but also in practice and policy. But some of the laws are more complicated. Changing it would be more difficult than just actually doing a training, right? So, so um, and we recognize that it should be a top-down and bottom-up approach, but more of the focus of the organization is bottom-up, and then the other organizations are in charge for the top-down approach. So. <laughs> Thank you, Verna, for this. Can I just add to it? Yes, uh, because obviously my focus today was on the collaboration between the two organizations. So I didn't really speak too much about ISIP's role of like bridging the gap between you know research practice and policy. And I think that's where our national chapters, and I'm looking at Martin because I know he, he does excellent work in, in Nigeria. So we really encourage our national chapters to become advisors to the government, right? To work with them, to sign an MOU, that's what they did in, in Brazil, and to become advocates. And I'm looking at, at Mate in the back. He is actually, he works together with our chapter in Brazil and with the government to you know, inform them to make sure that you know, the, the practices and it is evidence-based, it's ethical, it's high quality. But again, it's a works in progress, right? It depends on the country and but like we're trying to really go into a country and when we have the host organization, which with our national chapters answering your other question before is that we have a rigorous process, right? The criteria that an organization has to meet in order to become a national chapter. And then again, we work together with our partners like the African Union in, in Africa, and we consult with them. But yeah, I mean, depending on the country, it's really about bringing everyone together, but I mean, it's, it's not an easy task, right? So, but yeah, I, I don't know if, if Martin, you want to share just what, what you do in Nigeria with how you work with the government, informing them and in policy as well? If, uh, well Verna, let's go. Uh, just okay. Martin, please briefly. We are running out of time. Sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Olivia, for the opportunity. Uh, for example, in Nigeria, uh, ISOP Nigerian chapter collaborate with the uh, lead agency for drug control in Nigeria, that is the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, also with the uh, Federal Ministry of Health. So through that collaboration, we we tell uh, we inform them of what we are doing 
uh, including the capacity building, that will eventually influence uh, uh, drug policies. And incidentally, uh, a good number of these uh, policy makers have actually participating, participated in the, in the uh, various trainings, UPC, UTC. So from there, they influence policy indirectly. Uh, like uh, the uh, team said, it is not uh, a rocket science. It is a, uh, a slow process, but at least steady. So it is not, uh, it is not easy because it depends on different uh, countries, depends on countries and different uh, dimensions. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. And uh, sorry, we are very sorry that we are really out of time. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks so much for very nice presentations. And I don't want to take you the break. <laughs> Thanks so much and see you on another session. Thank you, ladies.